Hey guys, it's actually from the Disciples here with uh, first place LCS 8, uh, Gabriel Netz's virtual world deck, and top 16 uh, Tristan Pugh with his uh, very similar deck with um, changes and stuff. Uh, yeah, hi people. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so just a quick overview of the event. Uh, why? Why, how was it and stuff? Well, it was good. I won all my games. That was fortunate. Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> I, yo, I forgot about that. Wait. 12-0 broken. Tristan, how was your weekend? Yeah, it was pretty good. I uh, played like I really didn't want to win, but the deck carried me. Broken. Uh, after after hearing of Henry's stories, we learned that the deck is uh, very prone to carrying. So, yeah. it's okay. Um... You don't, need to, yeah. you don't need to think if you make VFD, it's fine. Exactly, he didn't make VFD though. I don't uh, know, it's Chucha, bro, Chucha control. Yo. <laughs> Just try skill drain. It's the full combo. <laughs> it's full combo, bro. Okay, so the, I guess the first like point is, uh, why did you guys decide to play Virtual World? Game. Um, okay, so we were testing it like, before Phantom Rage released, and we didn't expect it to be this, this popular. Uh, I, th I also think like it was a bit inflated the representation because a lot of our friends and our testing group played it, so we were like probably like thirty three percent of the virtual world players, but still we still didn't expect like I don't know other fourteen people to play it. Yeah. Uh, so in a format that you're not playing the mirror match because the mirror match is like obnoxious. Yeah. Uh, I think this deck's pretty good. It has a decent zoo matchup. Uh, it's okay against combo. I think it's it's only main issue is consistency. But it can go second super well into like fair decks, and it has like nice reco nice recovery. You can side into fifteen hand traps. You can play like a bunch of power cards. So yeah, and VFD is a good card. VFD is a very good card. No, it makes sense. It's like someone. Yeah, I think it was you, Gabriel, said it was basically just like salad, but VFD. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's that seems pretty good. Um, so I'm guessing Tristan just you played it for the, like the same same reasons, right? Yeah, like a VFD deck with an inherent mine out is just really obnoxious. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess we forgot to mention those. They weren't super popular, but the main reason we wanted to play this over other combo decks was Dino and Buster Blader. Yeah. So this deck stomps Buster Blader because Prologue doesn't do anything, because all your effects happen in hand. And yeah. the Dino matchup is super free because they make you go first, make VFD, and you have a mine out. Yeah, it's just impossible to lose against Dino, really. Yeah. yeah Unless you really try not to win. I tried my best to lose a game, and I still didn't manage to. <laughs> still couldn't do it. Nah, this deck, like, I still don't really know what all the cards do, but the more, like, I actually read them, I realize they're actually crazy cards. Um, so, yeah, let's just get get into the list. So, you're playing, like, three of, like, I'm guessing it's the good virtual world cards. I don't know if that's all of them. Who knows? We're playing three of all the main deck virtual world cards that exist. <laughs> Okay, there we go then. Good cards. Um, so, the first like talking point is talents over something like Foolish Burial Goods uh, or a different card. I don't know if there is one. Oh, oh boy. Alright, so Foolish Goods is something a lot of people play. Uh, we have like pretty strong opinions about this one because I don't think Goods ever makes your hands better. Because the thing is like, if you go good for King Long, the, the spot that searches, it means that your virtual world that sends King Long won't become a search next time. So you're basically like unbreaking yourself, but now you need three virtual worlds to play instead of two. Yep. And if you already had two, you you would be already be playing because you already had a virtual world and that virtual world would send King Long. So Goods was just useless. So the only way Goods is playable is if you play Metaphors Fusion, but then you're playing like a, a break for a glorified upstart. So I think Talents was just a better card. Yeah, talents are just like way more, uh, like higher power card. Like if you go first and you get Ash and you have talents and your hand is also playable, it's just like really unfair. Yeah. Like it's also good going second against Zoo. It's, it's just good very going versatile, second right? against like other combo. Yeah. Because like you can break like Dragon Link for example. Noble's harder, but like if if against like other decks being like half a board like Volt and stuff, talents is pretty good. It's also Dragoon out, which is like not that it struggles, but it's like not the easiest thing ever to out. Yeah. Yeah, it just means you have to think less. Exactly. You balance the game is just over a lot easier. We like thinking less here at Disciples <laughs> TCG. Um, <laughs> so then, like, 
also skill drain in the main deck as the one off floodgate power card, I guess. Yeah, uh, we had called by on that slot. Yeah. The issue is like called by game one only really hits Ash because all of the other hand traps that are that you can call by don't do anything to this deck other than Lancia, but Lancia is not made. Yep. So if I'm gonna main it, I would rather just main skill drain as like a win button in like so many matchups. Uh, it's terrible in the mirror, but we, as as I said before, we didn't expect to see that many mirrors. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's good because deck also has some consistency issues. So if you can just draw it to skill drain, you can just skill drain and choo choo just carry games. Yeah. yeah. Gabe also made the argument like they both like if it was skill drain or call by the grave, they'd both be really subpar going second. But call by the grave is either only stopping Ash or it's like only really a disrupt versus like. Eldritch or Misk, and those are irrelevant if you've made VFD. But like, if you if you can you can just draw Skill Drain and it carries you. Yeah, no, no, it all makes a lot of sense. Especially as like all the effects activate in hand or graveyard for what's it called, Nyan Nyan, right? So like, yeah. it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't actually impact on your engine as much. Yeah, right? it's only the extra deck monsters. But like, you just summon some big dudes and yeah, you exactly. have Chuchi to pop your cards. Mm -hmm. You can also pop Skill Drain if you really want to with Chuchi. That's kind of funny as well. The more I read this card, the more effects it has. Anyway, <laughs> um, so are there any other like comments on the main deck? I guess I don't mm. think. Maybe more hand traps. Nah. I guess was there a like, like you, argument you, for that? We, we, uh, at some point, we had like Trini Beerus in the place of the Stalots, but I think like in the mirror, one hand trap usually is not enough. You had to draw two. The difference between like opening two with six or nine is pretty relevant. I'd rather just win when I'm in the die road than trying to like win the lost cause of the, the mirror going second. Yeah. And, and like yeah. the other common mirrors. Yeah, like if you're trying to open two hand traps, you want to be playing like at least 12. So like make your odds favorable. So if you're playing nine, Gabe has said in the past that you're sort of stuck in a no man's land where like sometimes you'll draw one, sometimes you'll draw two. Whereas if you drew talents and you're going first, it's it's much better. Because like in the end of the day, you're playing a combo deck, you won't win the, the tournament if you go second every combo mirror. Yeah. So just gotta like play the variance. I don't like it, but it's the way Yu-Gi-Oh goes. Yeah. Okay. So extra deck then. Um, so the main one is I know Tristan played and you didn't is uh, Ultimate Zulkin, and I'm assuming it's Crystal Wing is the target for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So why did you decide to play it, Tristan? Um. So originally I decided to play it because I thought it would be easy to play around Nib by just like making Zulkin. Like, you force Nib or you summon Crystal Wing, um, and then you make VFD afterwards. But during the tournament, I realized that I do not know how to do those combos. <laughs> so it, it's also, like, it's a Dragoon out that came up, came up once where, like, Crystal Wing can just attack over Dragoon because it boosts its yeah. attack. Um, but in hindsight, I probably sh should have just played, like, better utility cards because trying to summon Zulkin is really difficult. <laughs> It's it's also summoning Zulkin and then like VFD going yeah. Out, right. But yeah, like making yeah. Zulkin is easy, but like making Zulkin and then having a play to make VFD afterwards is kind of awkward. Yeah. Like you basically need to summon all four of the uh virtual worlds from your hand to then make Zulkin and the VFD. And if you have a hand like that, you can probably just make VFD after you get nibbed anyway. Yeah. I think it also makes your deck worse the hand trap your deck doesn't lose to like Imperm, for example. It's like if they draw Imperm Nib and you do the Cloud Castle line, you don't lose to Imperm Nib. But if you uh, if you go Crystal Wing and uh, I mean Zulkin, then Cloud the Nib, then VFT you get blown off by Nib. Yeah, it's the same with Gamma as well. Like Gamma yeah. Nib beats Zulkin, but Gamma Nib doesn't beat like Cloud Castle after you get in a beard. Yeah, basically. No, so it stops sense. Um, I have Jaja written down. <laughs> I don't know if this means anything. Is this why? Uh, why? Why is this card in here? Is it? All right, all right. I, I have a reasoning for it, other than the funny name. Uh, other than the name, yes. Uh, so on testing, and actually in the tournament, I made Jaja more than I made Breaksword. So Jaja, it's like a dragoon out as well, because I wanted to have like two extra deck dragoon outs in the case like they they hold they held their their dragoon yeah. for the first out. Uh, but it just comes up in like weird game states, like because you can attack into something, you banish it, and then it doesn't die by battle, so you just throw Zeus on top. So it's like sometimes a like less resource break sword that can deal with things that like can be destroyed and stuff. 
It's not like the greatest card ever, but it was okay. But ja, ja. Like, the reason I really didn't want to play Zoken is because I really wanted to play Gaia Charger. Because I think this card's crazy. Just because it puts... Because it just allows you... Yeah, it allows you to make a 4 material Zeus. Yeah. Uh, so I just had like one extra space that became the Jaja. Yeah. Nah, the Guy Dragon seems kind of cool because it's sort of like a lot of times it just came up just for adding more materials for free. Yeah, Zeus is like so good. Like, uh, I feel it's so underrated in this deck. People like didn't test and they don't only know about VFD. But like, you can do like so many cool plays with like M7 bounce something, then attack, then Zeus. Or like M7 bounce like a virtual road from a graveyard and special summon. I did a game that I like, I had to normal summon ZZ to, stop, to start playing. But then I made M7 to bounce by on ZZ, because I normal summoned it, and then used the effect in hand. So I end up like M7 VFD and an add. And then this M7 is like, you can use it next turn. And then you throw Guy Charger on top, and then you throw Zeus for two on top. So just like free value. Yeah, no, that's just crazy. Like, you just get so much for it, just for like, Irish deck space, I guess. Um, yeah. So then, I don't think there's anything else like questionable in the extra deck. So uh, I think it's only like not the the rank six, uh, the data escape one. The oh fine, fine. yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that one. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> so fan fan was the original reason you played Gaia Charger because when you use fan fan's effect, you had to throw Gaia Charger so. You, because it detached two. So I had to throw Gaia Charger on top, so I had two material Zeus. But when we were testing, I don't know, I don't think I ever summoned Fen Fen. It's like okay against Eldritch, but I think Eldritch is already a good matchup. So we j every time that I wanted to make it, I just make M7 instead. So I think like 3 rank 6 was like overkill. And I'm guessing you never came up in this format where you needed it, right? No, no. Not, not really. I think another card that people have considered playing is Gossip Shadow. Um, but the problem with that card is if you make it with like a Nyan or like a G, uh, it means that they're not in the grave. So like you can't revive them with Lao, which makes your plays a lot more awkward. It also just makes them draw a card. I don't know. I hate it because like they hand trap you. You do that. They draw another hand trap. They hand trap you again. Yeah, it's possible. It's it, it's, yeah, it's, it's so right. awkward. It's like the drag down, you know. Yeah. You drag yeah. down there, <laughs> and then they just like hand trap you again. Because they will draw the second hand trap. Always. Always. 100%. Um, mm. So, side deck then, I guess. Uh, so why did you decide to play these nine hand traps? Uh, we wanted things that overlapped with the Mihar and Inferno Ball. So, for example, if you cut no material and play Lancia, your side's better for the Mihar, but it's worse for Noble, because Lancia's dead against Noble. Yep. Uh, and we couldn't justify Lancia because we thought the mirror wouldn't be this popular, and Diana was a pretty free matchup. So we decided to have like Nib, and Nib's the best hand trap in the mirror. Token Collector is the best one for Noble, and then Gnome is the one hand trap that covers Dragon Link, Mirror, and Noble, other than Nib. But Nibs are in the deck, so we needed like an extra one. Yeah, and then obviously like Token Collector is just like busted yeah. best warrior. Yeah, Token Collector just like carries the game against Infernoble if you see it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, New Noble would be more popular because it was gaining popularity the last couple of weeks. Yep. So we really wanted to be prepared for it. Yeah, because Dino won the last LCS, so we expected people to be on Noble to counter Dino. See, I won the last one. Then we just counter to the last one, to this one. <laughs> it all made sense. Too broken. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's next? Uh, are there any changes you'd make to the list going forward? I think you might need to cut skills, right? If the mirror becomes so popular, because it's a dead card in the mirror. Card, yeah. But I don't know, like, I think this deck, like, it loses a lot of its power now that people know what the cards do. Yeah. And that there are so many mirrors. So it's really a matter of, like, testing and see where it goes. I think it has, like, a lot, a lot of growth for development, so it's getting more support next set yeah. as well. So... I don't actually know, like, obviously I don't know how, like, this impactful, or, like, how this impacts your players. But, like, I saw a lot of the time that, like, your opponents, you'd, like, have, like, a virtual world card on field. And then you'd activate, like, your first virtual world monster in hand. And it'd always get ashed. And I wasn't sure if that's, like, actually correct or not. Um, because it, yeah. it just seems so awkward just ashing, like, the random ones, like, GG or whatever. You kind of have to, because, like, if, you, if, you, uh, if the deck starts playing, you can stop it. So... Yeah. 
best line usually is just like enter the first thing they do and pray they don't have another because that has its consistency issues. Yep. But uh, you also get super punished if you go like Norman Yen, they GG, you, you Ash, and then like they Lulu, and you just get full comboed anyway. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter, you're just getting punished no matter what, right? It's, yeah. it's very awkward to, like, I don't think you can ever know exactly what to hit all the time. Yeah, because on the other hand, like, yeah. you can keep track, it's like trying to cut them off of a Datascape card. Yeah. It just seems because they need one. They need a name on the field so they can do everything else. Yeah. So that's like what you're trying to do when they're like going first and they are trying to play in your war. Just cut them off names so they can special some of the other ones. Yeah. Like I was watching. I was like, I know Lulu's like the like broken well, like one of the most broken ones, just because it's like it's basically a double search like half the time or something. But um, I don't know if like if it was ever worth just like holding a hand trap for that or not, but. It's a bit weird. Like, if you hold, you don't need Lulu to resolve to win. Yeah. Like, I think you, the best play is just stopping it early. But I don't know. There is development to be done. Yeah, Maybe people will figure out a better way. Okay. That basically wraps up the, like, deck portion of it. Um, do you, like, remember all of your rounds? Or do you want to just skip that? I think I remember mine. This time. Well, I didn't write them mind. down, so... Do you have yours? So do, do, do them first while I write mine. Sure. Um, so, round one, I played against Infernoble. Uh, I punted game one, and then, yeah, I just got comboed in game three. Round two was against Zoo. It was really easy. Round three was against Noble. I had token collector, so I won. Round five, I, uh, no, four, I played against the Phantom Knight deck. It's not very good, so it lost. Round five, I played against Floodgate Eldritch. Floodgates don't really do anything to this deck, so it lost. Round 6 I played against Vlad, so I won the die roll and I won the match. Round 7 I played against Dino, I tried my hardest to lose and I still won. And round 8 I played against the mirror match and uh, I really did just not want to win and so I lost. <laughs> and then unfortunately in top 16 you two played each yeah. other yet again. Top 16 I had to play against Gabe. It was his his turn to win. His turn. This <laughs> had to be done. Uh, Alright, so I played Zoo round 1. Uh, Infernoble round two. I played whatever shooting was playing round three. <laughs> I, I don't know how to find that. Uh, I think round four was Zoo or Dragon League. I don't remember. Uh, round five was Pac. I played Pac on Swiss as well, so it was very good. Cool. Then I played Dino. The same guy Tristan played. I tried. To, I I punted the game so hard, but never punished. Uh. Then I played Fark on Dino and Camneo on Novo. So that's Swiss, that's 8 0. Then I played Tristan on Virtual Road. For top 8, it was Paolo on Zoo, Dog, Marika, Uh Top 4, it was Coogan. We're playing like the same list of Virtual Road again. So like we played like, I played three mirrors on Top Cut. And like two of them are like basically the same list. Yeah, that's crazy. And Virtual Road with Pac again in the finals. That's crazy that you played three mirrors on Top Cut as well. Considering it's only what, like seven? Yeah. Yeah, there was yeah. seven in top cut. Which is just skewed into the virtual world bracket. I mean, it showed the deck was winning, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, do you guys have any like shout outs before we end this? Oh, I mean, we have to shout out Masters 21. If I think. <laughs> uh, I there mean... were five different Master 21s in top cut. There was five? Whoa, bro. Yeah. We're, we're, we're too, too powerful. It's our Blue's, Blue Masters theory. <laughs> uh, it's seriously like shout outs to everyone on WAF, everyone on the virtual group that we, we, we tested this. Um, and to everyone, the disciples that helped us during the weekend by giving moral support. I always have to have the cheer squad on. Pom poms are out for top cut, don't worry. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, there should be a combo video up in the next day or two. Uh, so come back and watch that. But yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, as well as following all of our socials in the description below. Also, don't forget to check out our sponsors at The Brotherhood Games, Messamat, and Card Pocket down for high quality products and one of the best tournament organizers in the UK. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you in the next video.